All right, how's it going, guys? Today we're going to be talking about Invest 98L, which is that tropical disturbance we've been talking about along the East Coast. It has become an Invest, so we do have spaghetti models now, and I will be showing you guys that throughout this video. And also stay tuned for the end, where I'll have my official forecast. Anyway, guys, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask you to subscribe if you like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for my social medias. Now, looking at our high-resolution satellite imagery here, you can see that it is... To the west of the Bahamas now and it's just offshore of Miami by this point and a lot of that east coast of Florida and it is it is heading kind of in a west northwest direction and it is going to make impact with Florida we will talk about the impacts that Florida will feel but you can see there is some tall thunderclouds in that one and we'll actually take a look at some of the radar that we're picking up off coast of Florida at this point now what I did want to look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook and we if you look at the bottom right there I should have it on screen. It does say 40% chance of development within the next 24 hours. And I believe that means it's either tropical depression or tropical storm. I, I forget if it if it means that we will have a 40% chance of a tropical depression or a 40% chance of a tropical storm. But I'm pretty sure it's depression. So we'll say 40% chance of tropical depression. Because I think it's more like a 50% chance long term that we do see a tropical storm out of this one. Now... With that being said, I do want to take a look at our five-day graphical outlook, and this is what I'm talking about. We have a 70% chance of development along the East Coast long-term over the next five days, and I don't think there's a 70% chance that we see a tropical storm. We will look at the the model's uh, you know intensity guidance here in just a little bit, and that's going to tell us more about how strong they see this thing getting. This is as of 8 a.m. It's 10.22 a.m. at this point. I don't know why NOAA doesn't have this one heading on shore to Florida because it's almost definite that it is going to make impact with Florida here very, very soon. Uh, but they like to keep it offshore. I think there's a really good chance that we will see a Florida impact and even maybe enter the Gulf and then re-enter Florida and then back into the Atlantic. I think that's the most likely track at that point, at this point, but you will see my official forecast at the end. So uh, enough talking about it. Now here's some of that model guidance according to the spaghetti models. And like I said, we very shortly will have a a Florida impact here. This is according to the uh, 9 a.m. guidance, the the newest newest model guidance here. And within 24 hours, this thing will be back at the at the west side of Florida and maybe entering the Gulf and then back into the Atlantic by 48 hours from now. So this is going to be very interesting. And again, the best case scenario for this one was the Florida impact because it isn't going to be able to develop too much during the next 48 hours. Once it re-enters the Atlantic, we'll have to see what it wants to do. And a lot of these are keeping it very far offshore, but I think there is the possibility that it stays uh, closer to the coast. But at this point, the most likely outcome is that it stays pretty well offshore of the East Coast. Again, you can never rule out that possibility of an East Coast impact, though. Uh, with these storms, they're so unpredictable, and they can kind of do whatever they want, especially if they get pretty intense. Now, here's your intensity guidance, according to the models. It's basically like the spaghetti models, except for intensity. If it enters that green zone, it is a tropical storm, and if it enters that yellow zone, it is a Category 1 hurricane. You can see about 50% of the models have this one entering tropical storm status within the next, let's say, 84 hours. I would say 50 or 60% of the models have it entering tropical storm status. Some of them sooner, some of them later. But most of the models, if not about half of them, do have this one getting to about tropical storm status. Now, next we're going to be looking at a video that shows the radar. It does have the spaghetti models on on site here, you can see. And we do, in that red cone, that's the five-day guidance from NOAA. But you can see the radar in motion offshore of Florida there and just how close this system really is to hitting Miami. Now, I do want to show you that vorticity here, that cyclonic vorticity. We always look at this, and this is according to the GFS. You can see most of that vorticity is offshore as of that is as of this morning, I guess. Yeah. So... As of this morning, we had that cyclonic vorticity a little bit further offshore than it is now, but we are going to move on one to 42 hours from now. So this is Sunday, and you can see most of that vorticity is in the Gulf, according to the GFS, on the other side of Florida. And then by, this is 100, hour 102, this is 12Z Tuesday, 
it's all gone. There is a second system it has developed and eventually kind of go offshore of North Carolina, but this is the GFS, and we do see it say weird stuff. We are going to pay attention to this, but I wouldn't worry about it too much as of yet just because it is the GFS, and the GFS likes to show some crazy stuff according to Tropic sometimes in the moderate to long range. We do see it do some wacky stuff. Now, as, as far as wind is concerned, here's the impact you could feel. The most wind that the GFS is seeing out of this one is about 20 to 24 mile per hour winds in that little green area just to the east of Florida. And really, that's going to be, that's pretty windy, but I don't think it'll cause too much major damage. You could see some minor damage like things knocked over, some things getting torn apart, but really for the most part, that's just enough to knock things over in some cases, but not enough to really damage anything. So that's... That's some good news for Florida. Now, rainfall for Florida, again, that what you see in North Carolina and Virginia isn't associated with this system. So we're just going to go ahead and ignore that for now. That can be for a separate video if we do see the impacts of that being more possible and we do see it on more models. But for now, we're going to ignore that. In Florida, though, we do see two to four inches in those pink areas. So a lot of Florida experiencing that. Anywhere in the blue, though, is above half an inch to two inches of rain. So all of the southern half of Florida is within that. And then you can see a lot of those greens for northern Florida. You're still at about 0.2 to 0.5 inches of rain for those northern areas of Florida. I think Jacksonville's in that, areas like that. So, I mean, still a lot of rain, but in those blues and pinks, that's where we're expecting the most rainfall. And again, two to four inches of rain. Florida's used to it, but it can cause flooding in some areas. Now here's my official forecast as of right now for Invest 98L. You guys know I update these very frequently, so this is my official for today, but tomorrow it might not be my official forecast anymore. You can see we have it just offshore of Miami basically, and most likely this is going to head into Florida, and it is possible that it does enter the Gulf briefly and then head back to the northeast, re-enter Florida, cross over Florida, and enter the Atlantic again. And I know the GFS model didn't have this happening, but most of the spaghetti models do have this happening. So I'm going to side with the majority here. We do have it heading, possibly hitting the coast of Georgia and South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey. We all have to pay attention to this one because it's all possible that we do see some impacts. But you can see I barely keep the red on those areas because it is far more likely that it stays offshore within that red area off, off the coast and really, we don't know how much how intense this one's going to get. But I would say it probably becomes a weak tropical storm at least. And we'll have to wait for further updates for how far this one develops. At this point, since it's hitting Florida, we're going to have to wait for it to re-enter the Atlantic. Because the it hitting Florida is really going to stall out development. But once it re-enters the Atlantic, we'll have to see. Once it's able to redevelop and start developing more, we'll, we'll see how far we think this one will develop. But as of right now, the winds are at 25 knots. The center of low pressure is at about uh, 1,015 millibars, which is pretty high pressure for a tropical disturbance, actually. And the movement is northwest. Again, entering Florida, re-entering the Atlantic, and then up the coast, whether that's up against the actual land or if that's pretty well offshore. We'll have to see in future updates for this one. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tropical uh, outlook here for this storm that we have that could possibly become a tropical depression, likely become a tropical depression, possibly become a tropical storm. And we'll have to wait for further updates again on the development of this one. But there is another Invest, Invest 99L as of this morning that is just to the west of Puerto Rico, or just to the east of Puerto Rico, actually, uh, pretty far to the west or east of Puerto Rico, but still, we do see much more development possible with that one as it is in the main development region still. I'm going to be working on a video for that one just after this one, so be on the lookout for that because I am going to need to make a video for that one because the intensity guidance models actually have this one becoming a category one or category two hurricane as of right now, so this one could be our next major storm to be watching and possibly even become a category three. So we'll have to watch and see what that one does as time progresses. But I will be making my first video for that one in just a few hours. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe if you're along the East Coast or if you're in Florida. 
pay attention to updates, pay attention to your radar, and just know what's happening locally in the short range because I can't really update you guys on, on nowcast type situations. So pay attention to your local news, pay attention to the National Weather Service as they'll be your best bet for things that are imminent. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video. Have a great day.